So today we are going to discuss the function of valves. We are discussing the different steps of a cardiac cycle and we have discussed the basics of ECG, we have discussed the functions of uh, atria, we have discussed the function of ventricles, we have discussed the function of aortic uh, pressure curve in the, uh, in the cardiac cycle. So today we are going to discuss the function of valves in, the, in, the, uh, in their role in the cardiac cycles. Valves are also very much important to, uh, de to allow the smooth flow of blood from the atria into the ventricles and from the ventricles into the pulmonary uh, artery and uh, aorta. The valves make sure that there is no backward flow of blood from the right ventricle into the right uh, atria or from the left ventricle into the left atria or from the aorta into the left ventricle or from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle. Basically we already know and we have discussed again and again that during the cardiac cycle activity, electrical activity starts in the SA node, sinoatrial nodes. The electrical activity spreads to the atria. Initially it excites the right atrium RA and left atrium LA. The atria contract when the atria contract, it allows the blood to the uh, to go into the ventricles. The ventricles are not contracting at that time, so blood comes into the ventricles. Then the electrical activity comes. At that time, electrical activity was only present in the atria, so it was contracting and it was not coming into the ventricles. Then electrical activity with the help of AV node comes into the ventricle, the ventricles contract. When the ventricles con contract, the blood from the right ventricle goes into the pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery, and from the left ventricle goes into the aorta. But during this contraction process, the valves, the role of valves is very, very important because the, when the ventricles contract, these valves make sure that they close and they do not allow the movement, the flow of blood from the ventricles back into the atria. And these valves, the aortic and pulmonary valves, they make sure that during the ventricular contraction, they open so that blood flow from the ventricles into the pulmonary artery and in the, into the aorta. And once the blood has been pumped into the pulmonary artery and aorta, these valves then make sure again that the blood should not go back into the right ventricle, from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle and from the aorta into the left ventricle. So we basically have two types of valves, the atrioventricular valves or the AV valves and then the semilunar valves which include the pulmonary artery and the aortic valves. So we first of all discuss the atrioventricular valves. The atrioventricular valves, they are further of two types. Basically the atrioventricular valves mean the valves which are present between the atria and the ventricle. So they, has been, they have been shown here with the black color. One atrioventricular valve is present between the right atria right atrium and right ventricle. Another atrioventricular valve is present between left atrium and left ventricle. The valve which is present between left atrium and left ventricle is known as mitral valve, mitral. And the valve, the AV valve, which is present between the right atrium and the right ventricle is known as the tricuspid valve. So, the mitral and the tricuspid. These two are shown with the black col uh, color. They are the atrioventricular valves and they are present between the atria and the ventricle and that's why they are known as the atrioventricular valve. These valves basically prevent the backward flow in the backward pressure gradient. Break, ba uh, backward pressure gradient occurs when the ventricles contract 
and there is a backward pressure the flow of blood is going into the atria so there is a backward pressure gradient during this gradient these valves make sure that they close they go into the closed position and they during the backward flow of the blood which occurs in the backward pressure gradient which the gradient which is generated during the contraction of the ventricle these valve close so they prevent the blood due uh, backward flow of blood backward flow of blood from the ventricle into the atria these valves are very thin and soft these valves are very thin and soft so they are not very much heavier as compared to the aortic and pulmonary valve and the uh, their so closure is very soft so they are thin and their closure is very much soft soft closure occurs when the ventricles contract they uh, they close very quickly easily because they are thin and their their closure will not make much noise almost no pressure is required for their closure they close because we discussed that they are thin they closed very softly and almost no pressure is required for their closure the moment the ventricles contract the atrioventricular valves the mitral and the tricuspid they have they close directly almost no pressure is required and another quality of these valves is that they are attached with the papillary muscles they are attached with the papillary muscles so basically somewhere here in the ventricles we have the papillary muscles so these valves are with the help of cordae tendini cordae tendini cordae tendini they are basically soft fibers which attached which attach with these valves with the help of papillary muscle so inside the ventricles we have some muscles known as the papillary muscles and with the and these valves are attached with these papillary muscles with the help of cordae tendini which are thin fibers so the valves the atrioventricular valves the right at the tricuspid and the uh, mitral they are thin they have their closure is very soft they uh, their closure does not make any uh, much noise and almost no pressure is required and they are attached with the help of cordae tendini with the papillary muscles so this is cordae tendini and this is papillary muscle so they are the they are attached with these muscles the function of the attachment the reason for attachment of these cusp of the valves is to prevent bulging of the atrioventricular valve into the atria so the reason for attachment of the cusp of the valve with the papillary muscle through the cordae tendini is to prevent bulging the bulging means that the papillary the valves should close they are now in the closed state if there would be no if there would be no cordae tendini and they would not be attached with the papillary muscle then during their closure during their closure they would bulge backward into the into the atrium so they could bulge back into the atrium to prevent this bulging they are attached with the papillary muscles through the cordae tendini this is the speciality of atrioventricular ventricular valves the tricuspid and the mitral valves and this these cordae tendini and papillary muscles are not present in the uh, semi lunar valves the aortic and pulmonary valves the closure of the atrioventricular valves will make the first heart sound 
first heart sound so first heart sound when they close it will make the first heart sound which could be heard with the help of a stethoscope while examining a patient now another uh, characteristic of the atrioventricular vein is that the flow of blood along the orifice when they are open now this is an open state of these atrioventricular valve when they are open the flow of the blood is not very much fast the, the ejection of blood the velocity of blood is not very much fast and there is the, the abrasion of these valve the abrasion of the margin of these valves is not very uh, much high and the, the velocity of the blood through the atrioventricular orifice when they are open is not very much high because the orifice is large enough so the velocity of the blood is not very much high now coming towards the semilunar valve semilunar valves are of two types again one is the aortic aortic valve which has been shown here this is the aortic valve and another is pulmonary valve this is the pulmonary valve so the function of the aortic and the pulmonary valve is again to prevent backward flow of blood in backward pressure gradient now here the backward pressure gradient will generate when there is a lot of blood in the pulmonary artery when the ventricles have already contracted and blood has come into the pulmonary artery and the aorta so there gen there a backward pressure gradient gets generated because when the contraction is over relaxation of the ventricle occurs the pressure become decreased so a backward flow can occur due to backward pressure gradient pressure is high in the aorta and pulmonary artery and low in the left ventricle and left right ventricle due to which backward gradient generates so during this gradient backward gradient these valves will close they open when the ventricles contract they open so this is the open state of the aortic and pulmonary valve which are semi lunar valves so when blood is coming uh, from ventricles into the aorta they basically open and when the blood is coming backward from the aorta or the pulmonary artery they close into this position so they have cusp they have cusp which close in the backward pressure gradient and these cusps are very much heavier they are heavier they are not thin here the atrioventricular cusps were very much thin and they require pressure for their closure we discussed that with a slight contraction of the ventricle the atrioventricular valve close almost no pressure is required with little force they close but the semi lunar valves which consist of the aortic and the pulmonary artery valve they require a little bit pressure some pressure should generate some blood should flow backward some blood should flow backward from the aorta into the right ventricle and from the pulmonary artery into the right uh, from the aorta into the left ventricle and from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle and that flow of blood should generate some pressure that will close that will close the semi lunar valve because their cusps are arranged in such a way that they will allow only one way movement of blood they will allow movement of blood when blood will blood will go from the ventricles in this way they will open they will open but when blood comes back with some force they will close so they are heavier they need some pressure and they have their closure is snap closure their closure is snap closure they make much noise and that's because the velocity of the blood is very much high the velocity of blood through the atrioventricular valve when the blood was moving from the right atrium or the left atrium into the ventricles it was not very much high because the orifice was a bit large so the velocity was low 
and there was no much abrasion but here the velocity of the blood from the pulmonary artery back into the right ventricle and from the aorta back into the left ventricle is very much high so due to the high velocity heavy valves the closure is snap closure with much noise and when they close it is known as the second heart sound second heart sound these SHS or FHS these are not standard abbreviation I have made it these myself so don't follow these but you should remember when the atrioventricular valves the mitral and tricuspid they close that is known as the first heart sound this is much soft closure without much pressure while the atrioventricular uh, the, uh, the semilunar valves because the the cusp the cusp these individual cusp they are much heavier they require pressure and the velocity of blood backward flow is very much high that's why the closure is uh, making more noise and when they close that's known as the second heart sound these first heart sound and second heart sound can be heard with the help of a stethoscope now as we discussed the velocity the velocity of blood is very much high so they there is more abrasion there is more abrasion at the edges of these valves Abra abrasion at the cusp is very much high they erode quickly because of the high velocity and their heavier uh, because of their heaviness they erode quickly and more abrasion and erosion is occurring in these cusps of the semilunar valves and finally no cordy tendini is present in the semilunar valves we discussed that the atrioventricular valves they were attached with the papillary muscles with the help of cordy tendini but in the case of pulmonary and aortic valve there is no such pulmonary uh, papillary muscles and there is no such, such arrangement attachment of the cusp of the valves with the papillary muscle rather the flow of blood in itself the flow of blood when blood will come back it will close it will close the atrio aortic and pulmonary valves and to prevent the backward bulging here we discuss the the bulging of the valves from the into the atria in the semilunar valves to prevent the bulging of the valve they are attached with a heavy fibrous tissue here so they are attached their cusps are attached with a heavy fibrous tissue which prevent their bulging into the ventricles so to summarize the lecture there are basically two types of uh, valves in the heart the atrioventricular valves and the semilunar valves the atrioventricular valves are present between the atria and the ventricle they are of two types the tricuspid and the mitral valve the tricuspid is present between the right atrium and right ventricle the mitral is present between left atrium and left ventricle these atrioventricular valves they prevent backward flow of blood during the backward pressure gradient when pressure is high in the right ventricle during contraction they prevent the backward flow of blood they are thin their closure is soft no much pressure is required for their closure and they are attached with the papillary muscles with the help of cordy tendini these cordy tendini prevent the bulging of the right ventricle into the atria and the closure of these valves will make the first heart sound the semilunar valves they are further of they are also of two types the aortic valve is present between the left ventricle and the aorta the pulmonary artery valve is present between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery they also prevent backward flow of blood in the backward pressure gradient when pressure is high in the pulmonary artery and the aorta and the ventricle is relaxing there is a break, backward pressure gradient so during that backward pressure gradient they close and they will prevent blood from coming from the uh, aorta or pulmonary artery into the right ventricle or the left ventricle they are much heavier they require much more pressure for their closure and they they close with a snap with a more sound more noise and more vibration 
and the velocity of blood through these valves is very much high due to which erosions occur at their margin more quickly as compared to the atrioventricular valves and finally there is no cordy tendini attached with the cusp of the aortic and pulmonary artery valves and the closure of these valves will make the second heart sound so hope you have understood this lecture thanks a lot for watching the video